So we began our discussion on molecular orbitals, and thus far we said that according to quantum mechanics, the number of atomic orbitals that we're combining must exactly equal the number of molecular orbitals that we are forming. Once again, the number of orbitals you're combining must equal the number that you are forming. Now, so far we have tried to combine the 1s atomic orbitals of two identical H atoms. So, they're both neutral, that means they have one electron and one proton each. And so far, we saw that when we combine these two atomic orbitals of the one of the H atom, 1s orbitals, we form something called a phi bonding molecular orbital, or simply a bonding molecular orbital. And we said that the energy of this molecular orbital of the bonding molecular orbital is lower than either of the atomic orbitals from which we're forming. So according to this diagram we see that the y-axis is energy and so the lower we go the less energy we have the higher we go the more energy we have. Now once again according to quantum mechanics if we begin with two atomic orbitals, we have to form two molecular orbitals. So far, we've only seen one. Well, the second one is shown right up here, and it's called the phi antibonding molecular orbital. And we'll see why it's called antibonding in just a second. The first thing you have to notice about this antibonding molecular orbital molecular orbital is that it's higher in energy than either of these guys. So let's move to this diagram here. So here we have the combination of two of these atomic orbitals to form our phi bonding molecular orbital. Now notice the following. This positive and negative sign designates the sign of the orbitals and orbitals are simply wave functions. So these guys represent the sign of the orbitals or the wave functions. They do not represent charge. Now, um, so when we combine these two guys, what we're combining is we're combining two orbitals, two 1s orbitals of the same sign. And we form an overlapping molecular orbital called the bonding molecular orbital. So to better understand what this is, let's draw out our proton and electron diagram. So here we have the nucleus of our atom HA, and here we have the nucleus of our atom HB. Now the two electrons are found somewhere in the middle. Now what this electron, what these electrons do is they stabilize these protons. In other words, let's suppose we took these two electrons away. According to Coulomb's law, these two positively charged nuclei would begin to repel one another and would travel in opposite directions. But what these electrons do is they stabilize these two positively charged nuclei. And because this nucleus is attracted to these two electrons and this nucleus is attracted to these two electrons, these two protons or nuclei will be held in place and therefore a bond or a covalent bond will be formed. And this is known as the bonding molecular orbital. So let's look at the creation of the anti-bonding molecular orbital. Now what this means is that we're combining two orbitals where one of the orbitals, one of the 1s orbital, is of a positive sign and the other atomic orbital, the other 1s atomic orbital, is of a negative sign. And remember, orbitals are wave functions. And that simply means that when our orbitals go from a positive sign to a negative sign, they must go through the point zero. And this is known as the nodal plane, and we'll see what that is in a second. So, we're combining these two oppositely charged 1s atomic orbitals. So we form a, 
a positively charged atomic orbital and a negative charged atomic orbital. And this is altogether known as the molecular orbital. And notice what this region here in the middle is. This is called the nodal plane or simply the node. This is the point zero. In other words, nodal plane is the region where the electron density is zero. What that means is that we will never find an electron or electrons in this region here. And so let's see what that means by drawing out our uh, proton electron diagram. So here we have two protons, our nucleus one, our nucleus two, and electrons. Now because the electrons can never be found in this region here, that means that there is nothing stabilizing the electrostatic repulsion between these two positively charged nuclei. And that means in this case, in the anti-bonding case, the two nuclei will actually try to repel one another and our bond will be broken and that's exactly why it's called anti-bonding our bond is broken in the anti-bonding um, molecular orbital so once again to recap electrons found in the bonding molecular orbitals will stabilize one another because of the stabilizing formation of electrons and protons and this will tend to hold the atoms together. Electrons in the anti-bonding molecular orbital cause dissociation of the atoms because of this nodal plane region. Electrons cannot be found in the nodal plane region and that means these two protons will repel and they will move away from one another, dissociating, breaking that covalent bond. So note the following important point. Electrons can be found both in the bonding and the anti-bonding molecular orbitals. However, there's a big difference between the bonding and the anti-bonding. When the electrons are in the bonding orbital, the bonding molecular orbital, they will stabilize the bond. When the electrons enter the anti-bonding region, the anti-bonding molecular orbital, those electrons will tend to destabilize our bond and our bond will tend to dissociate or break.